Okay. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome to today's edition of um, La Token VC TV. Um, you are um, definitely welcome to the first edition in the week and the first episode in the week. And then we look forward to having a very insightful discussion with our panelists here. And um, I would later ask them to introduce themselves. But for now, um, Latokan VC TV is the premier Lion platform where we connect um, entrepreneurs with investors. And we actively encourage pro um, projects, entrepreneurs, startups to come around on our platform to pitch their projects to our network of investors and um, get the feedback investment that they're looking for. Um, today, we are going to be discussing a very um, important to subject post-COVID um, right now. And it says one year with the pandemic, what are the new emerge industries? I mean, if you ask me, I'll tell you um, there's a lot happening in health tech, remote work, wellness, and productivity. And Right, what we'll be discussing today, we'll be trying to understand which areas well, of this um, or which industries will be much more dominant and which areas do entrepreneurs, professionals or freelancers or even students need to look forward to, I mean, in the future. And um, I would not claim to know too much about this. My panelists are well experienced businessmen, investors from all around the world and um, they will be introducing themselves um, one by one. And also, just before they do that, I'd like to encourage the audience, um, wherever you're tuning in from, you can jump on our LinkedIn, jump on our YouTube or Facebook pages or even Twitter pages and drop in a comment. We will definitely see your question live and be able to give you feedback in real time. So first of all, let me, um, let our um, audience, our panelists, introduce themselves. Um, Sarab, Sarab, yeah, Sarab, can you please give us a background about yourself, what you do, how, where you're located, and um, something to keep the audience excited? Thanks, Nathaniel. Uh, my name is Dr. Saurabh Bhatia. I am based out of Pune in India, and I am running an investment banking advisory service. I help uh, startups raise funds, and I also help them with uh, their business planning, modeling, and uh, any other related advisory that they need. I am sector agnostic, and I uh, sort of start uh, help these startups in everything. So I guess that should be sufficient about me right now. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean quite experienced investment banking and who doesn't want to be friends with an investment banker. Thank you very much for that intro. Next, um, I think I'll go to Abhishek. Abhishek, where are you dialing in from? Give us a brief about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for inviting. Uh, so myself, Abhishek, uh, I basically come across with around 16, 17 years of experience, majorly into HR talent acquisition, startup advisory, wherein I was last associated with as a HR head for when a blockchain startup company and right now running a venture called Recroin, which is a HR tech <coughs> advisory firm and helping early age startup and typically at a series level to provide them a talent acquisition support, HR advisory support where they are missing Typically, uh, they're missing something on that particular presence when it comes to the overall transformation work. And second, we are also building on one of the HR tech product on the blockchain. So that's about us currently, about me and company. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, wonderful insight. I guess startups should be looking forward to gaining some of your insights and um, inputs that you have at, on today's show. And then last but not least, um, the small town boy from Pennsylvania, Gary, 
Yeah, country that's boy. right. A country boy from Pennsylvania. So Yeah, yeah, country boy. <laughs> My name's Gary Fowler, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've done 17 companies, been involved in two unicorns. I was on the original management team. I clicked software, which was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion, uh, a little less than two years ago. And also co-founder of Viva.ai, one of the premier uh, AI HR tech companies, founded with uh, billionaire David Yang out of Silicon Valley. Um, I love artificial intelligence and quantum computing. I've written 123 articles in the last year. Um, and uh, I'm Silicon Valley based. We're looking, searching through GST, get you that shit done, venture studios all over the world, curating companies from Africa, from Indonesia, and helping them uh, become unicorns. So we are Silicon Valley based and specialize in AI and quantum companies. I've been involved in startups for 30 years, so I've been around the block a few times. I also speak uh, quite a bit. I've done you know, well over 300, actually 400 speaking engagements in the last year. Awesome, awesome. So there's every evidence that um, our audience will enjoy what you guys have to say today. And um, I'd like to start from the big one. Um, one year with the pandemic new emerge industries and gary let me start with you first i mean what 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 have you seen what is the trend and what are the emerge or emerging industries post pandemic that you've noticed well i mean let's you know I, I remember i'm a country boy so it's keep it simple stupid and yeah. so we're on streamyard right right yeah. now in nigeria in india right now i'm actually at my house in palm beach in florida so, I mean, we've had this digital transformation is upon us. 92% of the companies uh, pre-pandemic said that they were going to do digitally transform with remote workforces, et cetera, over the next 10 years. But that had to happen in a matter of months. So we be able, we've needed to be able to uh, push the boundaries. Thing Areas like drug discovery, I was on a panel recently in the UK, and, of course, with COVID, being able to find the vaccine in a timely fashion, using artificial intelligence instead of bench time to be able to do the modeling has increased. It's really, it's really across the board because we couldn't really, I mean, think about it, uh, even food delivery. People weren't able to go out of their houses while food was being delivered. Amazon uh, type companies around the world. We've had a radically change and the good news is because of this shift, because of COVID, it's really helped us push forward in a, an entirely different way. Of course, now there's, uh, you know, the data problem, the infobesity. If we look at the amount of data around us, it's about uh, 40 zettabytes, which if you stack CDs one on top of another, would go 29 times between the Earth and the moon. And that amount is growing at about 68% per year. So this this these challenges we have have really pushed uh, society forward look at what's happened just with uh, pollution the first time in 30 years that we've been able to see the himalayan mountains so on one side i'm incredibly uh, encouraged the pandemic was a uh, not good thing that happened but again let's let's look at some of the lessons learned it's really across the board look at supply chain I mean, the supply chain is broken. We couldn't even get a, to a roll of toilet paper in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, California, because we didn't understand where it was in the supply chain. And we based our ideology on just-in-time inventory. But now, you know, we've changed. So now companies are developing to understand the supply chain better from the point of uh, raw materials all the way to the uh, retail store. So it's been an uh, interesting time. Okay, awesome, awesome. I mean, from what you've said so far, I get it that um, um, industries, companies have had to accelerate the way they develop, accelerate the way they adjust to um, um, development. And instead of a 10 year um, plan, they could actually do it in months. That means that anything is possible. And um, I think it will force a lot of other companies or industries to sit down and really look at their processes, their systems, and how to accelerate development. Dr. Saurabh, 
I mean, in the past, in the past um, one year post pandemic, give me your insights. I mean, which industries have you seen come forward? So, uh, different experiences in different countries. Uh, so, let me say that those businessmen. Uh, who have been opportunistic in nature, have been smart enough to be opportunistic, have actually made a lot of profit during this phase itself. I know uh, of certain people that the moment pandemic started, the demand for masks and the demand for sanitizers, hand sanitizers suddenly grew up by leaps and bounds. And these were not very uh, technical things. These were not very difficult to manufacture or procure. So a lot of people actually jumped into these and uh, these people who did not have a business of hand sanitizer before, uh, one year later, they had not only have a manufacturing plant, they have got a complete supply chain uh, and the logistics have been taken care of. So all of a sudden, people like these have got a boost. In technology, uh, if we see earlier, like uh, we go to a restaurant, we see either a menu card which is printed or we see a menu card which was on a touch screen. Both the things are not acceptable now, given the partial opening of restaurants and all. So now when I go to restaurants, I see a QR code and there is some company supplying uh, the technology that you scan the QR code and you got the menu on your mobile phone. So uh, these kind of things are changing in the industry and a lot of... Uh, so you must have realized that in both these things what I've talked about, there is low... Uh, low complica complication of the technology that has been involved. It's not a high-tech industry that has suddenly uh, changed the whole world or something like that. Of course, I mean, what Gary has already said, we are talking on a streaming uh, streaming service right now. So all these uh, technologies are more complex, more demanding. But even in the low-tech things, the things have changed drastically. New companies are taking over uh, to kind of fill the gaps which have been created because of social distancing between people. So I see a lot of manufacturing also has gone up and that's where I'm seeing people are actually making a lot of money. Awesome. So the manufacturing industry is benefiting from this and not just so, the low tech ones, the uncomplicated ones. I mean, all you need to do is just sit down and look at how you scale increased mask production or glove production and stuff like that. So, like um, Gary would say, just keep it simple, and people are seeing opportunity there, and that's glad to know. So, if you're out there, you're watching this, look around you. I mean, how do you keep it simple and then still make good um, money, good opportunity from it? Right. Abhishek, I like. Uh, sorry, if I may add one more small point, Nathaniel. Yeah, I. Okay. I uh, when the when the whole thing started with pandemic, I was uh, once in the market and I saw a funny looking contraption made completely of wrought iron and welded together. And I had never seen that before. I did not know what it is used for. And then I asked the shopkeeper, he said, you can fix the sterilizer bottle on top of it and the foot pedal operated sterilizer. That was something I had never seen before. And Right now, what I'm seeing within one year, every building, every hospital, everywhere I go, you see, you see those um, pedal-operated pedal uh, pedal hand sanitizer dispensers. So all of a sudden, uh, they are omnipresent while they had never been seen one year before. This, this has spurred innovation, so to say, and innovation in the low-tech way. I mean... And, and that's just the spirit of um, innovation, so to say. It doesn't have to be complicated, simple, and um, effective. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I, I'd like to um, pick um, Abhishek's mind. Um, you, um, Dr. Saurabh, have said the manufacturing. Abhishek, what industry have, have you seen emerge from this whole brouhaha in the past one year? <laughs> So I agree with both uh, Gary and Mr. Saurabh, Dr. Saurabh, uh, whatever they have commented on different industry. But uh, starting from March 2020, when this particular wave of pandemic come and most of the organization are not able to decide what kind of mode they need to go. And maybe after some time, we'll say it's a new normal. So with a new normal, we'll take a lot of the industry will got benefited of. The first is edutech, 
because uh, one of the or maybe two of the bigger brands in india like upgrade and acad an academy uh, the founder itself commented on this particular thing that whatever revenue they have not able to make in 3 years they able to do in 3 to 4 months during the pandemic time wow. automation industry uh, you can take a example either any of the automation or video streaming tool uh, like zoom there will be new startup who also launched during that time and because of the webinar thing the traffic also got increase even if you see the subscription is also taken a little bit high uh, when it comes to these automation or video conferencing tool a few of the free tools if you see the traction is quite high and lot of time uh, uh, because of the heavy traction uh it's not responded it's been fall like skype you can tell or google meet the way we are using these kind of tools okay the usage is little bit high health tech definitely health tech is one of a uh, more beneficial sector in terms of the way gary have indicated logistic support and all so either uh, booking doctors appointment booking lab test or typically ordering the medicine definitely this side, sector also seem quite increased fintech uh, definitely uh, i can say there will be a good uptick in fint fintech sector if you see in last uh, typically one year but majorly uh, on the payment gateway side majorly on the lending side uh, maybe consumer lending is not uh, gone so high but definitely on the payment gateway and other uh, sectors get benefited out of that blockchain tech definitely i have never seen in few sectors uh, there will be a downside when it comes to recruitment or people get fired or people get the lesser salaries definitely uh, if i see uh, majorly into product tech, tech companies and few tech companies who comes under this umbrella uh, have keep on hiring during that, this particular time and they really need uh, one solution where they can do the good remote management of their team so that is typically the area where i see there will be a lot of movement in hr tech if we talk about uh, initially and uh, majorly in bigger countries people are know about the okr tools automation tools hrms ats but we have seen uh, typically the trend or companies are incubating these kind of tools a lot so that is typically the things i can see few sectors who got yeah. really beneficial out of that so that's my pie of awesome course. awesome and um, i think uh, when you when you mention hr tech i quickly recall the conversation i had with gary last week where he mentioned his um, one project is on where they have a uh, ai artificial intelligence um, hr package to help monitor um, the workforce and then predict mm -hmm. when a um, um attitudes or behaviors that would likely mean uh, staff is leaving or staying or to improve the quality of work and all right. that and that is something that definitely especially with the emergence of remote work it is going to be super necessary to be able to manage your staff from different uh, parts of the world and i guess um, you are right on the spot there and um thanks for your insight and just now um our new um guest uh fabio fabio i guess you are calling in from europe so please give me yes, a brief I'm intro calling, uh, i'm going yeah, give me a brief... okay just give me a brief intro of yourself what you do and your insights on the emerging industries post covid um i'm an economist by training um i'm a regular guest on the uh on vc tv um i have a phd from the university of chicago uh i worked in um, international organizations such as the international monetary fund the european central bank then i moved to the private sector to goldman sachs in london and um uh, I moved to work with sovereign wealth funds in the Arabian Peninsula uh in Qatar in Dubai and um lastly in uh, Oman where I was the uh, chief strategist of the Oman Investment Fund which is the sovereign wealth fund of the of the sultanate and now I am uh, 
partner in an investment bank which provides capital for uh, innovative startups or in general for uh, uh, for all sort of companies uh, grow ups and startups in particular and um, we uh, are specialized into listing in the over-the-counter stock market in New York. The investment bank is called uh, Golden Eagle and has offices in New York, of course, the headquarter, and then Dubai and um, Hong Kong, where we operate under the brand Emintad. So I am this... Uh, <laughs> Uh, cross one of many parts economics uh, and uh, and business and investment asset management awesome awesome so please give us your insight i mean you've seen in the past one year 365 days a lot of changes a lot of adjustments a lot of um, changes a lot of stuff happening and um, what's your own insight on the new emerged industries post covid but the main trends are those clearly visible uh, in terms of shift towards uh, remote uh, working or smart working, if you want to call it. Um, the um, uh, reluctance to travel, therefore, the um, need to, to find alternative ways of interacting with uh, colleagues, clients, uh, peers. Uh, and definitely a boost to the whole health tech um, and biotech uh, space uh, because it is clear now that uh, this pandemic is not going to be the only one, the only health uh, scare that we'll have to face and resolve over the next few years. But it's like an alarm bell which is uh, uh, has gone off, and it must be uh, you know uh, emergencies uh, in the future need to be tackled more efficiently than uh, it has been done with this COVID nineteen. Now the um, the changes will be pervasive in all sorts of industries, and it's not uh, we haven't seen the you know, like a, an entire new sector uh, emerging uh, all of a sudden. We've seen a reinforcement of several trends that were already um, in motion uh, in manufacturing, in um, e-commerce, in smart working, in uh, robotics, uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. One of the trends that probably will be... Um, will will take uh, uh, a pervasive role will be the reshoring in other words the uh, supply chain probably will be shortened and concentrated um, in a few steps not in many 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 steps over many, many, many countries. So this means that manufacturing, especially in the developed countries, will tend to be upgraded to um, uh, tools like uh, robots, uh, um, cooperative tools between humans and, uh, and robots, uh, exoskeleton, and uh, you know automation of warehouses uh, because the, the the need to have uh, a stronger control over the whole production process is becoming uh, a burning uh, need uh, that means that also logistics might be transformed and will have to be increasingly, I mean, this is already a sector where technology is pervasive, uh, but probably there will be another uh, jump up in the adoption of technologies in the ports, uh, um, uh, container ships, 
uh, and uh, and warehousing. Mm, lastly, I think education uh, could be um, impacted by the uh, by the pandemics, by the consequences of the pandemics, because the uh, distance learning you know, has been tested and has been experienced all over the world. Now, there will be courses that one can must still take and follow in presence. So with an instructor, teacher, professor, uh, you know, in the same room. But there might be a lot of other uh, cases, for example, the introductory courses, which probably will not need um, uh, the traditional form of teaching and can be, uh, you know, uh, can be delivered via uh, Zoom or via other uh, distant learning uh, tool um, in this sense for example i mean i we have here in italy uh, a course where the student does not see any professor for three years it's uh, just uh, the student and the computer so it's designed as a teacherless or professorless uh, system for uh, developers, uh, developers of application software uh, and whatever else. So that I think could be one of the long lasting legacy of this uh, pandemic. Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, great insight there. But I think um, in all of this, um, I did some research and I found out that um, the cybersecurity industry is still there still valid and uh, real estate is still going to be affected um real estate and we still have um construction yeah construction you know going to be affected with um post covid now my 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 my, my take on all this is that post covid the professional students they need, they need to focus on some key areas in their career and um adjust the um the um skills that they, they need to have to be relevant in the future. So I, I'd like to go to Dr. Saurabh. Please um, give me some insight on the, on the relevant skills that people will need to stay relevant post-COVID uh, for professionals, for, and, and like you said, um, like Fabio said, it's more like a, going to be a pervasive um, 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 disruption in these industries because no new industry will actually emerge but the development of each of these sectors will be accelerated and then you have to adopt new systems new technologies and new ways of doing things so what skills what what tools will be relevant for professional students to remain active and relevant in this um, new normal so uh in the interest of time, I am going to comment only on two industries here. One will be the healthcare industry and well, the other one on education. So in healthcare, as doctors, um, there is, uh, uh, like when we take medical training, the first thing we are told is never hesitate to touch the patient. The more you touch, the more you learn. And now the situation is uh, the pa you can't touch the patient. Telemedicine is coming in in a big way and trying to utilize gadgets to achieve uh, the diagnosis or to assess the progress of the patients. So the doctors with their bedside manners and their ability to test the patient, they have to reskill themselves that uh, I know that a lot of doctors do not feel comfortable with their final diagnosis or the progress until they have personally examined the patient. And that's not going to happen very frequently in going ahead. I mean, of course, surgery will still have to be done uh, in, in person, but a lot of conditions, in fact, the majority of conditions can be assessed uh, using telemedicine and using gadgets. So the doctors need to become comfortable with the gadgets, uh, comfortable with the result of the gadgets, and not feel, uh, not feel that they have not really done justice to the patients. 
so that is one part uh, in the, from the healthcare industry that we need to need to be aware of from edutech perspective i see a huge uh, opening i see a huge opportunity which exists for uh, for the for the startups and that is that till now education industry has been focused only on connecting the professor or the teacher with the student using some kind of streaming service and so that one person can talk and the other person can listen and learn or some screen sharing sort of thing but uh, even earlier when we had analog systems uh, we used to provide uh, remote controls to each student to give answer for multiple choice questions or to raise their hands and those kind of things these things need to come back Uh, or at least uh, come in the form of a software so that the data about how much is the student getting involved in the uh, in the in the online lecture how much is the student able to interact with not only the teacher but also with his or her peers that part also needs to come in for educational streaming services and a simple zoom like solution is not going to be sufficient in future so this is another area where the startups will have to kind of uh, step up uh, provide such skills and the data which students will generate will be crucial to determine their internal assessment and not just uh, assess them based on their final examination results thank you awesome awesome so i have this feeling that um, you are encouraging for edutech more of a blended learning approach where the um ai applications get used to um interacting with the students and um capture personalities capture traits and not just focus on the theories of whatever is being studied and that i think we are yet to see grow full bloom and that would be really interesting to have um post covid um fabio i mean you just gave your insight on some of the industries that you feel uh are going to survive and stand out in the post covid what skills do you um feel will be necessary to stay relevant in the post covid era essentially you know we we are on the cusp of a big technological innovation wave so students uh from elementary school all the way up to university uh, need to be aware uh that uh, a very strong technical background in computing uh in uh, you know, all sorts of uh tools uh, um, that are used in the uh on the on the web on the uh, smartphones and so on and so forth need to be acquired um the uh, people who are now uh learning in uh, in school or in university need to know what uh, quantum computing is uh they need to know uh what blockchains are they need to know uh how the nuts and bolts of their uh, uh, chosen profession will be impacted by the uh, technological uh, innovation wave for example yesterday uh, i was uh, <laughs> you know chatting with a group of students uh, and um, a couple of them uh, were studying law but they weren't studying uh, you know the, the the public law you know constitutional law they were trying to um, get a specialization they were getting a specialization in smart contracts uh, uh, international contracts uh, uh, international law um, uh intellectual property law because these are the uh fields of the future and uh, you know, probably in the next 10 years we'll see a lot of innovation even in areas where we thought uh which we thought were immune from from uh, from the <laughs> technological advance so the the, the 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 skills 
need to have the, 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 the skills one uh, needs to acquire have to have a heavy emphasis on technology, computing, uh, coding, uh, uh, and all sorts of applications. Uh, but even more important, you cannot hope to learn once and for all. So the model, the, the current model of education in which one studies until uh, age 24, until age, uh, I don't know, 28, if he um, uh, gets a PhD, and then leaves, you know, for the rest of his life without learning anything else, is gone, is dead. So we need to uh, understand that the education system uh, must be geared not only towards the young, uh, not only towards the uh, students in their, uh, I don't know, 20s, uh, or let's say from teenage to, 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 to mid-20s, they need to be geared also for uh, people in their 40s who need to upgrade their skills, and possibly even people in their 50s and their 60s, because you cannot hope to work from age 25 to age 65 with the set of notions that you've acquired at university. Awesome, awesome. I think I liked what you said back there about the need to constantly learn, relearn, unlearn, relearn, unlearn. I mean, that would be a very useful trait going forward for anyone wanting to stay relevant because the rate at which technology advances, I mean, it's probably every six months. And if yeah. your skills are not updated to that level, then you find yourself in five, 10 years doing the menial jobs and stuck in the past. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, yeah, awesome. I mean, and Gary, Gary, do you have something to say about the skills that need to be relevant in the, in the coming era post COVID? I yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the the idea now is just it's just faster because everything's changing so quickly. We need to continually, as we said, continually retool because there'll be the two classes of people, the people that are relevant and the people that aren't relevant. And so it's a continue. It's changing. It's faster and faster. The speed of change. So what does that mean? That means as new technologies come out, learning about how to work with unsupervised and semi-supervised artificial intelligence. As Fabio said, quantum computers. I mean, it's just you, if you, you know, the, the difference between before and today is that in a year or two, not even five or 10 years, you can become not relevant. You can become an antique. So that doesn't matter if you're 20, that doesn't matter if you're 60, that doesn't mean you're 30. It's, staying relevant in the world. So each and every one of us have that in front of us. At the same time, we're going to have these intelligent AI assistants to help us guide our lives. They're coming now. They're moving from smart to intelligent. By that, I mean uh, unsupervised AI, almost like a guardian angel, being able to help us understand a lot based upon the things that it knows that we like and don't like. And so each one of us that have that capability are going to have it. The good news is the digital transformation, Nathaniel, as you're in Africa today, I'm in Palm Beach in Florida. We're located all in India, all over the world, Portugal, Spain, Italy. So we're now able to be able to communicate like in no other way in the past. I remember five years ago when I first got started on Zoom, I was one of the early, early users. And at the time, I remember talking to the founder of Zoom, Eric's uh, VC, and I would send out a link to my friends and they said, oh, I don't want to use this Zoom. I have Skype. And here there are, what, 400 million daily active users of Zoom around the world. So, and look at, we're on StreamYard now. So the world has fundamentally changed. As I said, there, there'll be the relevant and the not relevant people and it's going to happen very, very quickly. And it doesn't matter your age. Remember the idea. I did a project at Stanford University about six years ago. 
with uh, students from Skolkovo. So there were professors from Stanford that got involved in the project to help us. But it was living to 120. But today the target age is 150. And we're not that far off. Think about it. With gene splitting, with genomes, with all the technology, smart pills coming at us, we're going to monitor where we are at any one point in time. So we're going to live a lot longer. I mean, it's going to be, you know, 60 won't be old anymore. You know, 120 will be old, right? 110. <laughs> so we're the world's changing rapidly. So we need to adapt. The one thing that's critically important for everybody that's tuning in today is remember the curiosity you had as a child to be able to seek things new and different is important to maintain your entire life. Maintain that curiosity because that makes a difference. A lot of people around the world, as we get older, we take less risks. You've got to take some risks. you got to be able to explore it because that's really how you grow. Awesome, awesome. So I think the key skill Gary mentioned here is not coding or anything, but it's curiosity. Because curiosity will take you everywhere, be it coding, be it AI, whatever it is. Just keep your curiosity. Know, I talk to, you know, I, I've talked to some of the wealthiest people in the world. Um, Kuram, who's uh, in, uh, and if he's less than high, Kuram, Sharaf. He's uh, got $7 billion in Bitcoins. Um, some of the richest people in the world, multi-billionaires. And every one of them has curiosity. They're always curious about something. Because the one thing, once you start to lose your curiosity, then things start to change for you. You start to look forward and not outward. And the thing is, you know, life is to be enjoyed. Happiness is important. Curiosity is incredibly important. Some People say, well, curiosity killed the cat. But listen, yeah. curiosity, curiosity would change the world. If it wasn't for Steve Jobs and, and his curiousness or Elon Musk, think about it. People said to him, you know, you're not going to succeed. How can you go from PayPal to Tesla, you know, to Solar City, uh, to SpaceX? And he did it. He rolled his own dice. Now, look at it today. Now he's a hero. Before, <laughs> And I remember because I was at the original store on 101 and um, uh, near the uh, Oracle headquarters in Redwood Shores. And I remember going in there and he had a dream and he did it. Now he's a hero. You know, he went from a goat to hero. So part of it is believing in your dream, moving it forward, visualizing where you want to go and be curious. Curiosity no longer kills the cat. It's probably the most important ingredient you need going forward. So if you're watching us out there, um, kindly um, join the conversation, make a comment, ask a question. We are live on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We are also live on YouTube. You can comment and uh, move straight to Abhishek. And Abhishek, your insights. Apart from okay. all these that these gentlemen have mentioned, yeah, yeah, yeah. what so skills do you feel? Thing, yeah, yeah. So most of the things uh, I can say covered by all the industry stalwarts, Sora, Gary, Fabio. Uh, I just talk about little bit micro level uh, from the job seeker point of view, what kind of skill they can acquire to at least get a job uh, for them and typically from the student point of view, the buddy who will be just a college passed out or somebody who have even a five, six, seven years of experience or 10 years experience being moving on to the lateral direction. So I only talk about technology sector. Moreover, uh, all the uh, things come under technology being to health tech, uh, edu tech, gaming, all, all other techs, blockchain. Okay, so few skills I you can see there'll be a trend and most of the companies are typically hiring these skills a lot. So being depend upon their technology stack, they're hiring developers or coders a lot from the front end side, from the back end side. Uh, most of the things or most of the startups are now coming on an app based startup. So rather than web based, the more traffic is coming on app based. So you can see there'll be a lot more growth in the Android, mobile, uh, oh, native awesome. developers, or iOS developer. Yeah. So there'll be a lot of uh, jobs, typically, uh, you can say, creating under that particular umbrella. Then anything go on the website, 
uh, web to app side definitely uh, on the tech side and other side typically ux is quite important for every startup okay from the user experience and what will the users say okay so definitely the ui ux design uh, uh, i can say these kind of skills are also in demand when it comes to hiring these kind of people uh, every software need a uh, automation testing so definitely the qa part cyber security uh, is definitely going to be a very mass massive uh, i can say hiring platform or the skilling platform for the people who are in this field community growth uh, blockchain and other relevant technology will be definitely uh, uh, maybe i can say uh, we can see maybe 300 to 400 times of growth to creating job in these area in coming 3 years coming 3 years down the line and uh, sales has definitely changed little bit the uh, and this is typically learned uh, by the organization during the pandemic time wherein the people uh, who are directly meeting the customer they are meeting on this kind of automation platform and other and inside sales are definitely the typically the inside sales keep on happening in uh, software or service sector a lot okay so this is uh, this is also one of the sales or uh, the job which will uh, we can see a uptick in coming years so that's that's the thing and definitely i take one line from uh, gary uh, the curat curiosity and uh, to see how they can upscale and upskill themselves that's important for every job so that's that's on my side thank you awesome awesome thank you guys thank you everyone for your insights i mean there's a lot to absorb a lot to learn I don't know how you guys watching um this um, edition you could easily go back to our YouTube channel and um watch this video over again because trust me there's a lot to learn a lot of skills to get ready to adopt and then um, we've come to the very end yeah with just a few minutes more and um wow a lot to take in but um just before we uh, as we round up yeah let me just say as we round up um can i ask each and every one of you to give me your final thoughts about the future post covid and um the things the trends and what you foresee maybe um you to um, abhishek might say bitcoin you hit 200k fabio might feel um we have exoskeletons you know on humans i mean give me your insights when it comes to the future of um work life and i think i'll start from fabio what what what's the future what do you what do you predict to to come in the next few years uh, i predict that um we will uh, uh be working as also gary said um in an environment where the interaction between humans and technology becomes the cornerstone of uh of professions uh, and in general economic activities for example the manual worker will be interacting with robots uh on the uh on the factory floor uh to some extent they already do uh, exactly exactly for example in the uh automotive industry the the adoption of robots dates back to the 70s uh and now it would be impossible for example to paint a car with a human uh the the, the paint job of cars is done by robots the only place where i saw uh humans uh, painting cars is iran because they are under sanctions and they cannot import the the the, the spare parts uh, for their equipment uh, but we will see uh, increasingly a system of artificial intelligence to assist doctors and lawyers i mean nowadays a huge huge amount of time is spent by lawyers searching for precedents that is a task that can be done 
by a very sophisticated uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, tool. Um, we will have better and more pervasive data on all aspects of our lives uh, through sensors uh, in smart cities, uh, through um, Internet of Things, so we will be able to make more informed decisions and uh, reduce the um, uh, error uh, in all our uh, daily and uh, daily personal and work activities. Um, in hospitals, uh, you will have increasingly uh, uh, surgery performed by robots, diagnosis done on the basis again of artificial intelligence uh, tools. So all these things uh, are not science fiction. These things are a reality. <laughs> we need to form enough people so we don't have enough developers, we don't have enough uh, technicians uh, to, to uh, make a sudden jump to this new brave world, but all the technology and most of the tools are already there. So it would be interesting how the deployment uh, in the real world will take place, how fast it will take place, the pandemic has been a great boost to this uh, uh, to this uh, technological uh, job. Advancements, yeah. So thank you for that. Um, so Fabio has said it. In the near future, he sees a convergence between between um, human and technology. It may come in different forms depending on the industry you are in, but look forward to that. Um, Abhishek, quickly, what do you see? Four to five, um, four to five, ten years from now, what is your prediction post COVID? I can see, I can see there is a uh, more technology intervention from now on. Okay, the way things got changed in uh, last one year, I can really see there'll be a lot of technology intervention. There'll be a lot of things which is going to be a change in different sectors. Uh, job creation is one of the point because skilled people and unskilled people both get a job, but uh, in a different model altogether. Okay, the way uh, the taxi aggregator do the things where we hire drivers and there'll be a uh, uh, Polish people who typically code and create the system. Okay, so definitely uh, there'll be a good uptake into the job industry. A lot of investment uh, will be uh, happening in a startup ecosystem. Okay, the way products uh, are coming in and definitely a few new technology will also come. Uh, the way we say there will be a paradigm shift happens in every 10 year or 5-6 years time. So we have seen this kind of paradigm shift typically in one year, a pre-COVID era and a post-COVID era. So definitely a lot more to come, I can see. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Abhishek. And I hope to see you for another edition of um, Latokan VCTV. Um, Dr. Saurabh. Please, um, you've had a lot of insights on protective um, um, equipment and all that. What's your insights, your prediction, five, 10 years from now? Where do you see the trend post-COVID going? So um, unfortunately, I'm a little pessimistic on this. What I see is a breakdown in a social structure, actually. What is already happening is that majority of uh, small things, transactions, like if I want to buy a t-shirt or if I want to buy a lamp, I can go on Amazon and order it and get it home. But bigger contracts, like if I want to give a contract to paint my building or to construct my house, I would like to meet the uh, contractor personally and judge the social cues and judge that person and see his previous work and then give the contract. As uh, more and more social distancing will happen, we will uh, indulge in personal meetings lesser and lesser. And uh, what I'm seeing is uh, a loss of understanding of social cues, a loss of understanding between human beings and a lack of trust emerging. And this, I feel, is not a good trend which the technology will bring. It's inevitable. And I'm not being, uh, and I'm not being a dooms uh, doomsayer. But uh, what I'm really trying to say here is that we'll have to make extra special efforts to continue 
to have our social structure intact and to be able to interact with other human beings without constantly getting scared that i hope uh, maybe he has covid so let me not go closer to him and maybe he has some other disease so let me not shake his hand so this uh, uh, there will be a time when the psyche will be seriously affected by this and recognized by everybody and separate efforts to prevent that breakdown thank you very much um human to human interaction is actually very important and it will be disrupted post covid and there will be a lot of doubts and uncertainties and i guess um one way or the other with or without technology we have to maintain that level of human connection which um up until i don't i don't think technology has been able to bridge that gap but we look forward to something happening in that direction um before we go gary I know you have your insights please give yeah, us yeah. something uh, you know I'm a little different and I'm a psychologist also so I look at things a little differently look at where we are today we're all over the world we're connecting and we're broadcasting all over the world humanity's fundamentally changed we can reach people that we never get a chance to talk to before I wouldn't be up at 5:30 in the morning speaking to you in Nigeria Nathaniel it just wouldn't have happened and to be able to That's see right. your face and to be able to share ideas. So we've really digitally transformed. We can connect to anywhere, from anywhere, and the access points are uh, dramatically increasing with the use of mobile phones, et cetera. So I have an entirely different opinion. We get to share ideas and customs and cultures and different ways of doing business and really break down barriers like we've never been able to do before. The other thing is living longer. As I said, we're going to live longer. The the target now is 150 years old. Things wow. like pills, genomes, gene splittings. Um, there's just a lot of technology, stem cells taking place to be able to help us live longer. So I see that happening very, very quickly. The other thing is hyper-personalization. You're going to see more hyper-personalization. So things like StreamYard, et cetera, more collaboration more ways that people can work together. Remember in the beginning of the pandemic, people were shocked, but what happened? Humanity's resilient. We came up with things like using Zoom, using StreamYard, using sources to be able to share ideas. You're right, Viktor Frankl wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. We came together in an entirely different way, and I'm really bullish on it because it hasn't been easy, but we responded. It took a couple of months for us to get over the top, and adapt. But I know from my own standpoint, I would travel f up to four hours every day to go to work, two hours in the morning, two hours back. And it was a bear. It, you know, I would leave in the morning, 536 in the morning, get into my office, then leave my office because of traffic, eight, nine o'clock at night to go back through Silicon Valley, back to my place. So I can reach people. I start in the morning. I do at night. I do now in one day, it would take me a week. And I would never, you know, tr imagine tr if I had to travel to Nigeria today to meet you, it would take me a week to get, you know, from there and back and to feel normal. I mean, I spend a lot less money. I'm a lot more efficient. And I see that really these efficiencies taking place as we move forward. We've got, we've adapted to it. My business in remote workforce management at the beginning of the pandemic is up 38 times, right? 38 times. And so, you know, companies are also adapting and, and getting used to it. You know, it took a while before when you would take a dog and a dog would come in view when you were on a, a conference call it would be a bad thing. Now it's not yeah. bad. Before, it's if I wore a mask and went into a bank, they'd get you arrested. Now you get fined for not wearing a mask. It's changed. Thank you very much, Gary. I mean, different angles, different insights. I mean, and totally opposite from what um, Dr. Su Saurab had to say, but I'm sure he still agrees with some of your um, thoughts. And um, here we've come to the end of today's episode, the first episode in the week of Latokan VC TV. And um, I really thank all our panelists for being part of this show. And um, I look forward to having, I think this is the first time I'm having Fabio on this show, the first time I'm having Dr. Saurabh and Abhishek. And uh, I look forward to having you guys um, in other shows and um, on other topics. So um, to our audience, yeah, guys, thank you for 
for really joining and um, watching and learning insights. Please go to our YouTube channel to uh, catch the show again. And we look forward to having you at the next edition later today in a couple of minutes or hours. Uh, until then, bye-bye.